Technical Veterinary Learning Channel Honored by Professor Ahmad Mamdouh Sharif, Professor of Epidemiology and Infectious Diseases, the ex-head of Department of Veterinary Medicine, the ex-vice dean of Faculty of Veterinary Medicine, Banisweef University. The second part of West Nile encephalitis, explanation, which includes clinical signs, laboratory diagnosis, differential diagnosis, prevention and control of the disease. Diagnosis of West Nile encephalitis disease. Clinical signs of West Nile encephalitis disease. Clinical signs in wildlife. West Nile virus has been detected in dead birds at least 138 species, although birds, particularly crow and blue jays, infected with Western Nile virus can die or become ill. Most infected birds do survive. The nation's first documented cases of domestic canine and squirrel deaths due to Western Nile virus occurred in August. 2002 in Illinois. The Illinois Department of National Resources saw a decrease in the state's squirrel population and sent animal for testing. It is thought that the number of squirrels in the area may drop temporarily but that the population should be not documented. They don't believe that the squirrels develop a viremia so the risk should be relatively low for spread of the virus with the information they had at the time. And this picture of commonly found dead of Corvid's species. Pets, shapey monkeys, shunk, domesticated rabbits, majority of them don't develop the clinical signs but catching the disease and may be dead without any signs. Gray squirrels, lethargy, biting pose, vocalization, ataxia, circling, encephalitis, and myocarditis are symptoms appear on them and this detected at 2002 in Illinois at United States. Clinical signs in small animals. Small animals rarely exhibit clinical illness. Case reports of dogs and cats positive with West Nile virus encephalitis report fever, depression, muscle weakness, spasms, scissors, and paralysis. Myocarditis can also be found. A serologic survey conducted in the initial epidemic area of New York showed a low infection rate of dogs and cats. West Nile virus was confirmed by Illinois Department of Public Health Laboratory in Chicago to have caused the deaths of a dog, wolf, and three gray squirrels. The wolf was three months old and in a small zoological collection southwest of Chicago. It displayed central nervous system signs but apparently didn't show signs of any other diseases. Again, official stress that people have a very low risk of contacting the infection from affected animals as mosquitoes are the only proven vector where West Nile encephalitis virus should be suspected in animals that exhibit neurological and cardiac symptoms. Experimentally infected dogs and cats must buy mosquito bites. Dogs showed viremia with no clinical signs. Cats showed viremia but one showed mild clinical signs. This done in a recent studies where dogs and cats were experimentally infected with West Nile encephalitis virus. Four dogs and four cats were infected by mosquito bites. 
all four of the dogs showed a viremia of low magnitude and short duration and didn't show clinical symptoms of the disease. All the four of the cat become viremic and all but one showed mild non-neurological signs of the disease during the period of the viremia West Nile virus was not isolated from the saliva of either of the infected dogs or cats. In addition, four different cats were exposed to West Nile virus per consuming an infected mouse. Viremia developed in these cats also, but none showed clinical signs of the disease. The study showed that dogs and cats can readily be infected with West Nile virus and that pre-animals may serve as an important source of the infection. However, neither dogs nor cats would likely serve as amplifying hosts of the disease. Clinical signs in large animals. A report from Nebraska University in 2002 has stated that Tupovine Sira tested positive for West Nile encephalitis virus. The first animal was down for three weeks but was still alive at the time of report. The animal was described as thin, expressing near limb ataxia, but was still alert and eating. The second animal exhibited ataxia in the hind limbs that progressed to paresis. The owners detected euthanasia after three weeks of illness and no further testing was performed. So, West Nile encephalitis in Abu Vine cause ataxia, which can be progressing to complete paresis and Down syndrome. The signs in alpaca, sheep, and goats are fever, horizontal nystagmus, torticollis, ataxia, recumbency, vocalization. The albaca had mild to moderate diffuse non suppurative meningioencephalitis. In September of 2002, samples sent to the Lincoln Veterinary Diagnostic Laboratory of University of Nebraska from a mountain goat and sheep were positive for West Nile encephalitis virus by reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction. The sheep was a six-year-old Suffolk U and was febrile, with hind limb paralysis that progressed to convulsions that did two days after the onset of clinical signs. A flock of 20 Rocky Mountain goats that ranged in age from 16 to 24 months had seven animals showed the same neurological signs and die over a two-week period. Clinical signs included horizontal nystagmus, ataxia, head tilt, and lateral recumbency. The remaining five goats were not affected clinically. Samples from a Suri alpaca tested positive for West Nile encephalitis virus by reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction. The PCR result was confirmed at the National Veterinary Service Laboratory. The animals exhibited clinical signs for three to five days prior to death. Upon necropsy, the alpaca had mild to moderate diffuse non suppurative meningioencephalitis. Clinical signs in horses. Flu like with anorexia and depression. The image here reported a horse with extended head and with uh, his tongue is coming out during the coughing. Paralysis of lips, facial muscles or tongue, head tilt, difficulty of swallowing and alerted mentation. Sense of two sounds, blindness, troubling during writing, and drowsiness. Muscle and skin twitching, hyperethesia, 
propulsive walking. At end stages, there is weakness, ataxia, recumbency, and scissors, and usually ended by death. Laboratory Diagnosis of West Nile Encephalites Sample Collections From Life Animals Double Bear Theorem with Two Weeks Apart Blood Sample Cerebrospinal Fluid And From Dead Animals Portions from the Brain and Spinal Cord Viral Isolation in tissue culture. Serological examination. Seropositive and unvaccinated means Western Nile viral infection. This can be detected by ELIDA technique for IgM detection. Plague reduction neutralization test with four-fold increase is mean positive. Gel visualization of Western Nile virus by RT PCR amplification. Necropsies should be performed by using proper biohazard precautions, histopathological examination of the brain or spinal cord reveal presence of autolysis of the neurological cells. Differential Diagnosis of West Nile Encephalitis Disease West Nile Encephalitis Disease have to be differentiated from all diseases causing nervous manifestations, such as porna disease, encephalomyelitis types, and rapes. Prevention and Control A killed West Nile virus vaccine for horses has been available since August 2001 and became fully licensed in November of 2002. It requires two doses of the vaccine that given as three to six weeks apart, followed by an annual poster dose. This product is restricted to use two licensed veterinarians. Client should be cautioned that effectiveness of the vaccine occurs after the booster dose as by means the second dose and it's best to set a vaccination schedule to get the second dose into them at least two weeks before the mos mosquito season begins. Mosquito management through seven steps. Surveillance source reduction, personal protection, biological control, larvicide, adulticide, and biosafety. Surveillance include dead pair testing, sentinel check and flock, mosquito collection by test for pathogens and account for species, larvae and adult mosquitoes by map habitats and record keeping, then determining nuisance vectors. Source reduction by eliminating larval habitats such as garbage collection, river size, tires, bird paths, containers, rain gutters, unused swimming pools. Making habitats unstable for larval development and public education, marsh water management by drain, fish access, and gated. All of these will help in source reduction. Personal protection through reduced time outdoors, especially evening hours, wear long pants and sleeves, use mosquito repellent, such as 35% DDT don't use in your animals. Number four, make sure all window screens are intact. Number five, use yellow bud light bubbles in outdoor light fixtures.
Biological control through utilizes predator, both natural and introduced to eat larvae and puppy, mosquito fish. Other agents has been used but are not readily available. Fungus protozoa and nematodes and copepods. Larvae sites use when source reduction and biological control not visible. More effective and target specific, less controversial than adult sites apply to smaller geographical areas. Larvae concentrate in a specific location. This table showing larvae sites products such as Timifos and Mythoprene, etc. and etc. Adult sites, when other control measures unsuccessful, least efficient, proper type and time of application helps efficacy, arterial volume foggers. 250 gram per acre and fat them a small droplet contact and kill adults. This table showing the adult side products such as malassian and etc. The biosafety includes mosquito avoidance precautions, bug spray, long sleeves, etc. Wear gloves or double plastic bags to collect dead birds. Wash hands after handling, manipulate carcasses in biosafety cabinet when possible for necropsy. See you all in the next video for explanation to another important infectious diseases of equines.